So the first thing with cardiovascular examination is to inspect the patient and you need to look at the patient from top to toe. So the patient isn't obviously breathless and I can see no visible cyanosis. I'm looking in the face for any pallor, around the lips for any cyanosis. There are no visible pulsations in the neck. There's no scars on the chest suggestive of previous surgery. And looking at the feet, there's no visible edema. There's also no visible scars in the legs. So now I'm going to look more closely. Can I look at both of your hands? Right. The hands are warm and well perfused. There's no peripheral cyanosis. Turn them over for me. And there's no evidence of any peripheral stigmata of endocarditis. Feeling both the radial pulses. I'm assessing for any radio radial delay, which doesn't exist. Can I press that hand in? Right. And also feeling for radio femoral delay, which isn't present. Okay, feeling the pulse at the wrist, I'm assessing rate and rhythm. So the pulse is 70 and regular. And in terms of character at the wrist, I need to check for any collapse. Is it all right to lift your arm in the air? And that's normal. When working up the arm, you then need to know the patient's blood pressure. Okay. And then you can examine the face. Just look up at the ceiling. So looking in both eyes for any pallor or evidence of anemia. Again, can inspect the cheeks. Can you open your mouth for me? Stick your tongue out and up in the air. And there's no evidence of central cyanosis. You can relax. So then examining the neck. I'm going to feel for the carotid pulse, confirming the rate and rhythm felt at the wrist, and feeling for a slow rising character, which doesn't exist. I'm now going to look for the jugular venous pressure. If you just turn your head just slightly to that side, and relax. So looking for a double wave pulsation and measuring it tight above the angle of Louis. JVP as well. So you can then move on to the precordium and you can inspect again confirming there aren't any scars and look for any visible movement. So I'm now going to palpate for the apex beat and I'm going to start inferior and laterally to its normal position so that I don't miss any pathology. And I can locate it and confirm its position. You can now feel for any heaves or thrills. And I can now move on to auscultation. I'm going to listen first at the apex with the bell. And as I listen, I'm going to keep one finger on the carotid pulse. Can you turn onto your left side for me? Right, so I'm now listening for mitral stenosis. So I'm bringing the heart closer to the chest wall. Again, listening at the apex with the bell. Take a breath in, and out, and stop. Fine, you can rest back. So I then move back to the mitral area at the apex and listen with the diaphragm, listening for any murmurs and checking for radiation in the axilla. I then move on to listen in the tricuspid area, the pulmonary area, and the aortic area. I can listen for any 
radiation from the aortic area to the carotids. You take a breath in for me, and out, and stop, and relax, and again, breath in, breath out, and stop. Oh, can you sit forward? So I'm now going to listen for aortic regurgitation, which is a diastolic murmur, which radiates to the left sternal edge. You take a breath in, and out, and stop. And while the patient's sitting forward, I'm going to examine the lung bases. Can you take a breath in? And out. And again. And out. And also examine for sacral edema. Rest back. And then examine for any peripheral edema. Fine. Thank you very much. To complete the cardiovascular examination, you need to examine for peripheral pulses, perform fundoscopy, dipstick the urine, and examine for hepatomegaly and splenomegaly if clinically relevant.